Welcome to Wonderful Wine Women, a series where we explore the stories of exceptional women who have not only embraced the challenge of a traditionally male-dominated industry, but have also succeeded in their pursuit. I'm Federica Zanghirella, a sommelier, wine expert and filmmaker, and I'm delighted to share with you the inspiring stories of these wonderful women. Throughout the series, we will discuss challenges and victories, brave choices and resilience. We will engage in conversations with strong women who have found success in an environment where their presence was once considered unconventional. Together we will explore the world of wine through their perspective as successful women in the industry. So pour yourself a glass of your favorite wine and join me in celebrating these wonderful wine women who continue to leave a mark in the exciting world of wine. Cheers! So my name is Denise Medrano. I am originally from California, uh, but I moved to London about 17 years ago. I've always liked wine, you know, when I was younger, but it was kind of just the, you know, cheapest I could find and whatever, you know, two for five pounds back in the day. Um, but I really, I think, discovered my passion when I was working in this restaurant in Washington, D.C. They would bring out this wine and they would pair it with a dish. And that's when I just was like, wow, this is this explosion of flavor and combinations, you know, that I'd never experienced before. And I thought, this is amazing. I really want to learn more about this. And, and just talking to the sommelier that we had there as well, uh, and the head bartender, um, they were both women, and they were really lovely, and it was just really interesting talking to them. And, and uh, yeah, and then I got the opportunity to go to Argentina to, uh, to study. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go, and yeah. And the course had finished, and so I was kind of wondering what to do. And I had a friend who was living here in England, uh, and she said, um, why don't you come to London? I had, I had lived in London in the past, so I knew it was a great place to be, and I wanted to come back. So I decided to come back here, and when, when I got here, the whole wine world just it opened up. I've been here for a long time, yeah. <clears throat> I haven't lost the accent, I still sound American. Uh, so my very first job was with Odd Bins, uh, which I, uh, some of you may know. It's, I think there's still a few shops around, but back, this was 2008, I think it was, or 2007? I can't remember now. Uh, and there was about 250 odd bins around London and, and the UK. I mean, odd bins was huge, you know, because this was before the whole natural wine movement started. So it was a very different scene back then. It was great for me because I was just starting out. So I was learning all about French and Italian and Spanish. And, and it's, it's really funny because, you know, when I tell people I'm from California, they're like, oh, so you must love California wines, you know, all about it. I'm like, actually, no, <laughs> I'm really bad. I, I know far more about French. I've spent a lot more time in France uh, and Italy than I have California, you know, um, which is, uh, I guess, a bit ironic. And when I started, this was back 2007, 2008, and this was when the internet, social media was, was starting to become really big. Um, and it was really big in America, but it wasn't here. And nobody was blogging here in England, in London, except, and nobody was really writing about wine except for like, you know, the big names, you know, in newspapers and things like that. And I, because I was working at Oddbins, I would get all of these invitations to go to trade tastings. But I just realized that nobody was really talking about wine in a relatable way to consumers. It was all these very, you know, fine wines and, and so I just started writing my blog, I started my blog, and I started writing about wines that I was tasting, going to these tastings, you know, and just kind of more like everyday wines and stuff, and, but not necessarily supermarket wines, because it was odd bin, so it was wines that were in independent wine shops. And because I was one of the few people who was doing it, and I, uh, I became quite well known amongst the uh, public relations companies in London, so they just started inviting me to to everything and I would write about everything and I think they they really appreciated that because I was going and eating and drinking but I was also writing about it and taking pictures I was massive on Twitter I was always tweeting this was or X as they call it nowadays but back then it was Twitter and so yes yeah, so I got to be quite well known and so that's uh, so it opened up again a whole new world meeting the winemakers going on wine trips um, eventually I quit retail and I was a freelance wine blogger for about six years so I spent six years pretty much just traveling around the world, going to vineyards, to wineries, hanging out with winemakers. I mean, it was the best learning experience that you could really ever ask for because, you know, I just had access to all of these people that were just so 
not only knowledgeable, but so passionate about wine. You know, it was great going out there and, you know, picking up clods of dirt and looking at it or, you know, looking at a wall of shale. And, and you know, I remember in Portugal, there was this huge, like, must have been 20 meters just of, of, of the soil, you know, of the rock. You could see the vine and the vine was just way up there and it was just snaking all the way down. It just came all the way down to the ground. You know, it was just, it's just amazing. I mean, to me, it was amazing. I mean, maybe I sound like a bit of a, I don't know, dirt geek, but you know, I just thought it was just so interesting and fascinating and how the grapes did that, you know, and, and how they produce such amazing wines from that, you know, from, from that, that plant. You know, so I stopped blogging because I I just got uh, I got burnt out because I was traveling so much. I mean, there was sometimes when I was more out of London than in London. You know, like I would go on a trip, I'd come back, do my laundry, and then go on another trip. You know, and it was it was really at one point I remember it was like every week I had a trip somewhere, and it sounds really fun and. You know, it's, it's really great to go to these beautiful mission starred restaurants and have these like 15 course meals and just all of these old, old vintages and things like that, or go to the, to the estates with the chateaus. But you, you, really there's only so many, I hate to say this, but Michelin starred meals that you can eat or that I could eat anyway. And also I think my liver was becoming foie gras. So <laughs> I, I decided I needed a break uh, and I wanted to do something else, but I didn't really know what to do. And then I was approached by this um, uh, a company, a bar, uh, restaurant group here in London. They were opening a restaurant, I mean, sorry, they were opening a wine bar in Soho. And they needed someone to, to basically run the wine bar, pick the wines, and be like the wine, the resident wine expert. And so um, that was uh, 68 in Boston in Soho. Um, so I opened that place. Uh, and uh, that's, that was kind of like my next step. So then I was running wine bars uh, for a while. Uh, and then I, um, it, it was great fun, but you know, Soho was getting home at like four or five in the morning. And I was not, you know, a 20 year old that can just stay up all night long, you know, and then sleep for two hours and then go back to work. So, uh, so I decided I, I wanted something a little bit more low key. So then I went into uh, working for wine shops, running wine shops. Uh, and um, because of all my experience uh, and working in the wine trade, I became a buyer for, uh, for the wine shops that I was running. And now finally, I've, uh, yeah, I've opened my own, well, it's, it's not mine, I'm a partner in the business. Uh, and so a, a, a very good friend of mine, she started a wine, uh, online wine retail, uh, selling wine coolers online. And we had always talked about opening our own place together. And so she said to me, finally, she's like, Denise, I've got, you know, the capital, I've got everything sorted. Would you like to open a wine shop with me? You know, you can be the manager and the buyer, you know, and, uh, and, and work for me, you know, uh, and, and be also, you know, uh, have a small part of the business as well. So I was like, yes, of course. <laughs> That's the five-year plan, you know, uh, is to build this, uh, to build it, uh, and maybe have another shop or two. We do it because we love it and because we have a passion for wine. We want people to, to pick up this bottle of wine and be like, oh yeah, I, I really love this wine that you recommended to me. It was so, so good, you know, or, you know, I always say these are my little friends you know, that I hang out with my friends every day because, you know, they, and every, every bottle has a story, you know, they, they say that, but it's true. Every label has a story. And, you know, for me, and I look at the bottles, I just see stories and people. I think it really is the accent, Americans in London, um, because people always want to talk to me about America, you know, so I think that really kind of made them drop their guard, you know, uh, initially. Um, and also Americans, you know, we like to talk and we're very friendly and chit chat, da da da. And so I think it was, it, it just made it a lot easier for me uh, in the wine trade, um, in, the, in the English wine trade as well, because I, and I definitely stu stood out because A, I was a woman, B, I was American, and C, I'm brown, you know. So, and back then there was, it was pretty much all white males, you know. Uh, I mean, now it's much better, but for years, I remember going to dinners and lunches, and I would be the only woman there, you know. And 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 back in back, you know, this was like you know, I don't know, 15 years ago. Manners, I think there was a bit more manners than there are now. No, no, not making any judgments or anything like that. But you know, so when I would get up to like go to the toilet, everybody would get up. <laughs> all the men would stand up, and then they would all. And then I came back, and they would all stand up again, and I was just like, oh my god, you. Guys, really, I'm probably gonna have to go pee again maybe another two or three times, so please don't get up. <laughs> you know? So it was, um, yeah, it was funny, but it, you know, it was, uh, that was the thing I noticed the most. And, and yeah, for quite a few years, it wasn't really, I think, until maybe mid, 
mid-teens that you started to see more women, more and more women around the lunch and the dinner tables. Um, but yeah, for it would just be me, and maybe there might be one other woman, you know. But often it was it was me and, and 10, 12 guys having dinner, you know, together. I used to joke sometimes because I would like leave early from a dinner, and I'd be like, "Okay, you guys can go to the strip club now," you know. <laughs> and they would all laugh, but I'm sure some of them are like, "Yeah, let's do that." <laughs> The only thing I would say, which is, I think, still happens sometimes, is like if I'm in the shop and I have a male colleague, sometimes, you know, I'll say something and then they'll be like, oh yeah, but you know, what does he think? And I'm like, who the hell cares? I'm the manager, I'm the one who bought the wine, so you should be talking to me, you know? We have this new um, employee here. Uh, he's an Italian guy, you know, mid 40s or so, and uh, somebody, asked me a question or something like that. I don't remember what it was exactly. Anyway, and they were like, oh, well, yeah, but you know, you should go and ask him. And I was like, uh, he's been here two days. I opened the place. I bought all the wines. Maybe I should ask me. <laughs> me? What do I think? <laughs> you know, I mean, but it was just funny because it was just, it, it was so annoying because I'm like, they see a man. So they just like, okay, so he must know. And I'm like, because he's also older Italian man. And I'm like, you know, honestly, so that, that does happen, but not very often, you know. It's, uh, in general, I find uh, uh, people are, are very accepting and, and, you know, they don't, they, you, occasionally you might get like this old, old guy, but, you know, once you start talking to him and saying, yes, I know this and that, and start, you know, just saying your knowledge, then they kind of like, okay. For me, the reason I really got into wine was because you never stop learning. And that's what I really love about wine, is that there's always something new to learn about. So I think you have to be really open to new, not just experiences, but new wines, new techniques, new ideas. You know, it, it's just such a, um, it's just a vast field, you know, and there's so much. You never ever know everything. Nobody, even the, the best wine experts in the world, they even say, oh, you know, there's always something new that you can learn about wine. So I think, you know, that's really important. Um, you know, yeah, education, educating yourself, you know, reading about wine. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I was quite lucky in that I was able to actually go and talk to all the winemakers, but I did the WSCT, Wine and Spirit Educational Trust um, uh, program, education program. I did up to level three, uh, and then the certificate. Um, I didn't go on to the diploma because it just didn't seem quite right for me. You know, it's all about, it's a lot of book learning, and I'm a much more, I learn a lot more when I'm out there, you know. It, it sinks in, you know, it all stays with me. I always find, not just winemakers, but wine, you know, the, the owners, the brand managers, the brand ambassadors, everybody is so generous. That's one thing I can say about the wine world, is people are so, so generous of sharing, you know, not only their knowledge, but their wine, um, their, their places, their, their everything, you know. That's what I like about the wine trade, is that everybody is just so friendly, so lovely. I don't know anybody who doesn't want to be in the wine trade. I always used to say that I wanted to have a little vineyard somewhere, you know, uh, because the great thing about grapes is that they always pick beautiful places to live. You never go to a vineyard and it's like in an industrial parking lot. But then I realized after all these visits to vineyards how hard it is to make wine. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna hire somebody to make the wine for me, you know? So, uh, so yeah, eventually, yeah, I think I would, I, I would like to, to be on a vineyard somewhere and have a little, or maybe just, you know, a little plot.